labor and the staff for holding them. All righty. You always had a lot of energy. Just um, FYI, we are recording this. If you don't want your picture showing up, you can uh, stop your video. So that way we just see your name. It's up to you. Got somebody else to admit here. Okay, let's see. Let's hear from um, George. Want to give a quick intro? Yeah, I, um, <laughs> I've been writing poetry for the past 20 years or so. <clears throat> I've won some awards with it. and. Um, I've been an, an artist, a visual artist, uh, my whole life. And I'm in a gallery in Morro Bay and uh, the Marina Square Gallery. And I've been oh, there yeah. for 16 years, 16 years. So anyway, I, I'm in a writer's group in the Tascadero. We haven't met this past year. We have done some, yeah, we have some, done some email, email uh, communicating with each other. So that's it. Yeah, everything is different this year. I think that's something we can all relate to. So, all right. Elliot. Oh, I'm sorry, Elliot. You want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name's Elliot Perkins. I'm a uh, sometimes Quest to College student and uh, sometimes artist. Mostly uh, work with computers. Uh, Marcia is my wife, and I'm looking forward to the reading. All righty. Okay. Thanks for joining us, Kevin. You want to introduce yourself, please? Hi, uh, Kevin Dravinsky. I've uh, lived in San Luis Obispo since 1987, and I, uh, I always acknowledge Jeannie Greensfelder as being a lovely local inspiration for uh, poetry and encouragement to participate in. Yes. Is she here? No, she's not here today. But we have had her on our campus uh, in our actual physical space a couple times as a reader and a presenter. So yeah, she's great. Shay, can we introduce? Can you introduce yourself and your kids? Hi everyone, I'm Shay Horn. I'm a Quest to College student. Um, I'm working on my transfer units to transfer for my bachelor's. These are my two youngest, Bryson and Harlan. Um, they go to the Quest to Children's Center. So we're yeah. all big quest to family here. All righty. Nice, nice to see you. you guys have been to other programs. I know you're getting big. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we've got Bruce up next and then Leslie. Well, it's nice to see we have so many different generations here represented. <laughs> I'm, I'm Bruce Padrigan and I've been teaching part time at Cuesta College for 21 years now. Looking forward to sharing some poetry. All righty, and Bruce has been a great person along with Marcia to come in camp, uh, come in the building on campus and do our in-person ones, which something to think about before we close today. Um, if you are interested in having any of these Zoom poetry sessions in the fall, I have a feeling we won't quite be able to do them on campus in the fall, probably the following semester, but you can put your comments in the chat. Leslie. Hi, I'm Leslie Sutcliffe, a former teacher at Cuesta College. Uh, I knew Bruce many years ago when we both worked at Hearst Castle. That's right, <laughs> Leslie. Wow, that's great. I know. Wow, good to see you again. Good to see you. And uh, Marcia invited me to this. I'm very excited to be here. Okay, and Leslie is a multifaceted artist. You write poetry too, to go along with some of your art creations. No, I use other people's poetry. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, we've got Kelsey and then Catherine, if you can give us a quick intro. Hi, my name is Kelsey. I'm a student at Cuesta in Library Studies, and I'm just checking this out to see what it's like. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Kelsey. Catherine? Hi, everybody. I'm Catherine. I usually go by Katie, but either one is fine. Um, I'm a student at Cuesta um, for the library program, and I am on my very last semester. And um, I have a three-year-old daughter who you might hear pop in and out of this. Um, she's very loud and talkative, and she will like to say hi, I'm sure. <laughs> so um, yeah, I wanted to read something um, by one of my favorite singers who happens to write a lot of poetry as well. And I, it's very deep, and I resonate with it quite a lot. So I thought it would be important to share with you guys. OK, Katie Warwick, right? Yes. Yes, OK, I just putting together your last name. Great. <laughs> Thank you. OK, Mayata and then Linda. 
quick intro. Okay, the lender that I'm passing through um, the quest of for just a season. Um, I'm in another program in instructional design and technology. Um, I do have some poetry and artworks that I do want to put in book format um, that I've done and I would like to create a book in that area. Okay, that's quite a project. Yeah. <laughs> Linda. Hi, I'm Linda Selvage and I'm a student at Cuesta in the library program. And I've just come to watch everybody today. Thank you for coming. We've got Marnie and then Dawn, both of whom are poets, I know. Quick intro. Hi, I'm walking. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Marnie Parker. I'm in the library science uh, program as well as art history. And I love poetry. I love just being present in it and listening to it. And I write sometimes as well. So are you going to read today or just listening? I'm going to listen. OK, sounds good. Thank Thanks. you. Hey, and there's Dawn, our co-worker. Hey, friends. I work in the library and the, as a tech, and I'm just here to support the troops. Oh, all right. Your hair hey, is longer than the last time I saw you. <laughs> it's longer than mine now. <laughs> oh, over here. All right. Let's go ahead and have folks mute themselves. And then I'm gonna turn this over to Susan and Don, uh, sorry, Susan and Paul, who are gonna do a tag team uh, um, moderator with our poetry reading today. And just to clarify, um, I have a list of who's going to read. I just wanna make sure I've got everybody before Paul gets started. So I have George, and Marcia and Kevin and Bruce and Katie and Paul and me. Did I miss anybody? No? Okay, thanks. Paul. So we were gonna begin, I think, with a, a few quotes about writing uh, poetry and the, on the process by uh, some various people. Of course, each is open for discussion. Please, uh, if you feel free to, uh, you know, weigh in on each. Uh, the first quote is by uh, Salvatore Quasimodo. It was quoted from a speech he made in New York. Uh, and this is as it was reported in the New York Times. He says, poetry is the revelation of a feeling that the poet believes to be interior and personal, which the reader recognizes as his own. And uh, we selected that because it, it resonates. Um, and if anyone would like to, to expand on that idea uh, very well. This would be a good time for that. And if not, we can move on to the next quote. Very good. Um, the next quote is by Emily Dickinson and uh, it is on the impact of art uh, as well. And she says, if I read a book and it makes my whole body so cold, no fire can ever warm me. I know that it is poetry. And, uh, and that again is keeping with the theme of how poetry makes us feel. Did anyone have anything they would like to add? Very good, very good. Let's see, T.S. Eliot has said that uh, genuine poetry can communicate before it is understood. And, um, and I think that's, that, you know, it speaks to the heart of poetry or, or well, it speaks to the heart of poetry speaking to the heart. And uh, our final quote then will be from W.H. Uh, Auden who said that poetry might be defined as the clear expression of mixed feelings. And uh, with those thoughts, um, I think we can give the program back to Susan for a few moments and uh, we can begin reading poems. Okay, thank you, Paul. I posted in chat um, a question for everybody if you want to answer it. Uh, if you don't, that's okay too. Just share with everybody, do you have a favorite poet? Who is that person? Do you have a favorite poem that comes to mind, a title that comes to mind, or a first line that's meaningful to you that's been with you all your life, perhaps? Um, if you want to share that and chat with everybody, it's open now. And so uh, before we start our reading, if it's possible, could you share with us before you read your poems, um, 
why you chose those, maybe the context that they came from. Uh, we've already shared our names. And so if we could just get to know you a little bit um, more before you read your poetry, um, it just gives it a little bit more richness. So uh, we were going to, we're going to start with George. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so this, the, these two poems uh, I have right now, <laughs> they're not uh, very long, uh, but both of them are, are, are about the uh, the green hills that we have in the spring in uh, San Luis Obispo County. So I don't know, <clears throat> it's hard for me to drive anywhere nowadays without pulling over and watching watching uh, the scene. So uh, uh, one, one is about um, a hundred year old woman that was a friend of mine. Um, her name is Lillian McNabb. She died a few years ago at 103, but I wrote this poem uh, in her honor. And this was in the San Luis Obispo Tribune in, 19, in 2016, back when they had money to print uh, poems from local poets, which they haven't for a number of years, it's just a shame. So anyway, okay, I'll go ahead and read this. It's called, uh, this, is her, our, this is Her Ireland. Last week, she turned 100 years old, born in Ireland. She has lived on the central coast of California 80 years, married, raised a family in her small home overlooking Morro Bay. In the spring, a rainbow of flowers cascades down the hill, down the cliffs. Hills, the color of potatoes she dug as a child, now the color of shamrocks. When she was younger, she wanted to return to Ireland. Now, in the springtime, this land becomes her home, the home of her childhood. As she rocks on her porch, she looks out and sees herself again playing in the clover. Okay. <laughs> A little emotion, right? emotional when I read that. So, <clears throat> this one is uh, called, uh, this is not a dream. This is another about our green hills in San Luis Obispo County. And this one is uh, when I was driving down uh, <clears throat> Highway 101 uh, from San Luis, from uh, Tascadero down to San Luis, uh, down the grade. So if you've ever driven that in the spring, it's an, an amazing scene. So. Um, so this is not a dream. I'm <clears throat> I must be in a horse-drawn cart headed down a narrow path to a village in Ireland. After the rains, new grass bursts out of sleepy seeds to paint every hill and valley a soft green. Morning fog quiets the coastline. Sun rays <clears throat> cut through early morning mist like lepre leprechaun lanterns. But this is not Ireland. I'm driving my car down the grade to San Luis Obispo. I rub my eyes. I shake myself to see if this is a dream. It's not. Once a year, we become Ireland or Scotland. Then quick as it came like Brigadoon, it vanishes. Our California hills change their palette from Sienna's browns to golden ochres. And <clears throat> as they rest and wait for winter range. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, George. Thank you, George. Okay. I have more if, if there's time when we're all done. Let's see how that goes. Well, okay. I think we're going to go around with two each and then we'll come back around with extra no, that's time. Great. So thank that's you for I those mean. two. Um, so our next reader is Marcia. And then uh, Kevin. And then uh, we'll do a uh, little writing exercise with Paul and then. We'll have prizes and then we'll come back for more. So next is Marcia. 
Thank you, Susan. Can everybody hear me all right, I hope? I don't know why my Zoom camera does that. I wanna give a little bit of an introduction to this poem. It's a poem I wrote myself. And I'm actually gonna give you two introductions because I thought you might like to choose. Um, they're both true. And um, if, you, if you're my age, you may remember as a teenager having something called a choose your own adventure book. And I love these books, not because the writing was that good or what would happen was that good because I'd always try everything to, so I could totally understand the permutations possible. But I liked the myriad possibilities, the idea of more than one ending or more than one beginning. So here are my two introductions for the poem that I'll be reading. The poem that I'm gonna read is called Not Sorry Socks. Okay, introduction one. The boss is a jerk. Maybe yours is too, maybe sometimes. Anyway, I wrote this poem because my white male boss was really getting to me one day harping on me for saying sorry. I have a lot to be sorry about, and maybe you do too. That's introduction one. Introduction two. What if the world, all the beings, all society, all structures, all matter was one single body, one prostrate injured body, and what if every single one of the cuts, bruises, and bites were ours to tend to? What if every wrong, every injustice was everyone's responsibility? I wrote this poem because I am sorry and sad that there is so much suffering, including my own. Mm. Not sorry socks. He told me not to say, I'm sorry. Women whispered to me, he hates women who say, I'm sorry. The obvious thing here is that I hate men who hate women who say I'm sorry. But now is not the time for that. Now is the time for how could I be not sorry? If I wore on my ankles the socks I saw last night in a shop that said not sorry on them. If I wore them every day, if I slept in them, if I never took them off, and every time I took a step I thought and read not sorry, not sorry, not sorry, stepping out a sorryless cadence all the live long day. Would I be less sorry? Because I am sorry, really sorry. I am sorry I interrupted you. I am sorry I was jealous. Sorry that I didn't listen. Sorry that I missed the boat. Sorry that I was too fearful. Sorry that I hurt you. Sorry that I only thought of myself. Sorry that I ignored you. Sorry I stopped talking to you. Sorry I didn't love you. Sorry I couldn't understand you and sorry that people suffer and die. I am not sorry at all. I am not not sorry at all. And if you think that you can take the sorry from the girl and absolve yourself, you are very wrong, mister. And I am not sorry to inform you. Mm. But that went. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So a poet that I really love is uh, named Olivia Gatwood, and she's written some wonderful poems. They're very, um, they can be kind of intense. This is one of, this is sort of a less intense one. You'll see, I think, from her writing how much of an influence she is on me, which is why I wanted to share Olivia Gatwood. But I have a little <laughs> disclaimer. You know, the internet allows you to turn itself on, turn it on and tune into poets reading their own work just any time of the day and they're so good at it. So when I read this, I'll be thinking of how much better she reads it, but hopefully you don't know that yet and you won't mind. <laughs> okay, this poem is called Girl by Olivia Gatwood and her last name is G-A-T-W-O-O-D. I don't think I'll ever not be one even when the dozen grays sprouting from my temple take hold and spread like a sterling fungus across my scalp, even when the skin on my hands is loose as a duvet draped across my knuckles, even when I know everything there is to know about heartbreak or envy or the mortality of my parents, I think even then I'll want to be called girl, no matter the mouth it comes from or how they mean it. Girl, the curling smoke after a sparkler spatters into the dark. Girl, 
sweet spoon of crystal sugar at the bottom of my coffee. Girl, whole mouth of whipped cream at the birthday party. Say, girl, I think I'll never die. I'll never stop running through sprinklers or climbing out of open windows. I'll never pass up a jar of free dum-dums. I'll never stop ripping out the hangnail with my teeth. I'm a good girl, bad girl, dream girl, sad girl, girl next door, sunbathing in the driveway. I wanna be them all at once. I wanna be all the girls I've ever loved. Mean girls, shy girls, loud girls, my girls, all of us angry on our porches, rolled tobacco resting on our bottom lips. Our bodies are the only things we own. Leave our kids with nothing when we die. We'll still be girls then too. We'll still be pretty, still be loved, still be soft to the touch, pink lip and powdered nose in the casket. A dozen sobbing men in stiff suits. Yes, even then we are girls, especially then we are girls. Silent and dead and still the life of the party. That's it. That's from her book is called The Life of the Party. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for listening. Our next reader is Kevin. Hi. I uh, About 10 years ago, I grew up in LA and spent all sorts of time at the beaches. Um, and I lived here for a long time before I bought a, a, a wetsuit. And uh, for the last 10 years, I probably swam and body surfed two days a week. Um, so I guess that's my inspiration for a lot of things. Um, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna read one that I wrote for a friend's 60th birthday. And if you could put yourself up on Black Hill in, in Morro Bay and be looking down over the estuary. Only when I, only when I wrote it, I, I called it Black Mountain. Um, first of all, cause that's what I thought it was called. And whenever I ran up the mountain, it always seemed like a more of a hill, not a hill, seemed like a mountain to me. And I needed two syllables right there. So. Uh, this is a estuarine, estuarine for, uh, for my friend's 60th birthday. Back Bay girl, I've seen the way you can pause time with a mid-dance hesitation move, perfectly poised, held, then released. Back Bay girl, I've seen the way you can pause time with a mid-dance hesitation move perfectly poised, held, then released. The way birds gather in stillness before they fly. The way a dark wave walls up and quavers just before it breaks. How the bay at high tide holds its breath before it exhales its essence back into the sea. I've seen you stop a moment in a world that can't wait to see what your next move will be up Black Mountain in the starched heat of mid-October, a high stand of eucalypti, ragged with wind-trimmed branches. Listen as intently as ever to music we oft times can't make out, the low, bow-drawn notes of a confident ocean, cheering, clapping for itself over and again. Up Black Mountain in the starched heat of mid-October, a high stand of eucalypti, ragged with wind-trimmed branches, listen as intently as ever to music we oft times can't make out, the low, bow-drawn notes of a confident ocean, cheering, clapping for itself over and again. In dreams, the trees descend to festoon up in colors of the estuary below and decked with bay garlands of burnt ochre, salmon, and pickled green, they join the midnight dance at Shark Inlet within sight of the Pearl Dunes, keeping one eye on your next dare and go. And I did another one. Um, hopefully I can do it from memory. I, I should bring up the words just for fun. Um, the first wind of spring, which I wrote a couple years ago, but it, uh, it calls to mind the distance that we uh, that we uh, sometimes have with friends that are, are close, but we don't uh, see all the time, and which I thought uh, rang true during these this last year and a half. It's called the first wind of spring. 
let us keep a whispered distance and honor that space between us. For what can keep us apart truly, not the river or the highway, your way or my way. An arc of unbroken sky contains all our play, all our dances. And though we may not be together now to warm ourselves at table, to share and treasure and gaze with all our might, we're as close as all this. In the everyday way you appear whenever the sky falls pink on the mountain, the way you glide electric in the iridescence of memory, how you catch the corner of an eye when a bird flits or the ocean persists, how you're in the first wind of spring that breathes peace and falls even into the by and by across common bonds of glory. We're as close as all this and always will be, close enough to speak and listen at the distance of a whisper. Mm. Ah. Did you, and did you just do that for memory? Uh, that one, I, I cheated once or twice, but yeah, I'd like to do, uh, I, I have a couple of mine from memory, yeah. I've never been able to do that in my whole life, so I totally admire anybody that can do that. Thank you. So um, we're going to, I'm going to turn this back over to Paul, uh, and then he has something special for us, and then after that, um, we'll go back to the reading with Katie and Bruce. And uh, so, Paul. What we thought we would do now is um, a haiku exercise. We've uh, we pulled together a, a couple of images uh, for thought, and um, we do have some haiku directions. However, we just uh, want you to have more fun with it than than you know form. Um, and that being said, uh, Denise, if you could please. Uh, share the haiku directions and we'll just kind of jog through those real quick. And uh, there we go. And so he says the uh, haiku is a Japanese poetry form. It uses a few words to capture a moment and create a picture in the reader's mind. There's like a tiny window into a scene much larger than itself, it says. And um, there are some haiku examples there on the page. Uh, we'll get the link up in chat in just a moment, so you could follow that on your own while you're writing. Um, with, there was some talk about the, the 17 syllables, uh, but we don't find that in this description. And uh, I think uh, as far as it goes, you should just be more satisfied with uh, your product than, than with your, your obedience to the rules as far as it goes. Um, and with that being said, uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look at these images and see if we can can create something of our own. And, uh, and, and I'll, I'll go ahead and I put that link to that haiku how to in the chat just in case. Oh, thank you. That. Okay, so which image would you like me to share first? Um, either I think okay. uh, we'll we'll uh, give everybody a chance to to drink them in and uh, and then maybe be creative. Oops. Can you see that okay? Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, I think this was Susan's favorite. Let's see, and I and that'll do. I think. Uh, would anybody like to look at it longer, or shall we switch to the next? Okay, switch. Very well, let's. Yes. You need to go back down. Isn't that beautiful? Can you see that one? Okay, guys. Mm -hmm. I wonder Paul, if we, we might we... want to mention it. Go ahead, please. 
I'm just going to say that we, we have permission to show these. Yes, yes. They, I, I called them all from uh, from free use sources. Um, I, uh, I googled free thought provoking images for educational use and uh, and, and, and most of them were, uh, were pretty were pretty topical and, and of a very serious nature as opposed to, to these that we selected. So I'm glad we uh, were able to find some that were light. Uh, yes. So I was thinking um, maybe while we could pose, uh, we could listen to a couple more and give someone time unless uh, Unless everybody was finished, in which case we could uh, we could maybe compare some of our our uh, quick compositions along with our, the rest of the program. I can, I have um, a quick haiku that I just did. And I'll share it in the chat or would you like me to read it? I'd like to oh, hear it. Yeah, read it by all means. Okay. And I have to say, I did this ahead of time because I had, I had the picture, so. And it does have 17 syllables. <laughs> Look, <laughs> looking skyward, finding hope there, embraced by terracotta walls. Um, I have one from the same photo, the rocks one. And um, I started it because I had seen the picture ahead of time, but I just sort of tweaked it when I saw it again. And it is by no means uh, the normal count of syllables. I don't really know how to do that yet. But this is what I wrote. Finding the ancient rocks he hears the years ahead speak. He leaps from rock to rock. That's it. Oh, well met, Susan. Well met. Feel free to speak right up as you're ready. Um, um. Hi, out, out of curiosity, I have a haiku that I actually wrote about a month ago, and it's not related necessarily to those pictures, but it's nature related. I was wondering well, if that would me. be acceptable to read. Certainly. Okay. Yes. okay. Um, I don't have a name for it or anything, but um, okay. It's uh, 17 syllables, as per usual. Um, okay. We dance in the flames while smoke and ash surround us. Don't put out our fun. That's it. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. I have one that yeah, was same the same. I had this haiku published a long time ago, um, and it's kind of amusing. <laughs> a pale green worm sits upon the soft orange skin. It eats its way in. <laughs> I have one. Is this a good time? Yeah. Oh yes, please. Go ahead. It's it was inspired by the the tree with the magnificent roots. Ancestral roots need my watering now and then, never forgotten. Mm. Wow, nice. Very, very nice. Who's next? 
I guess I'm ready. I've counted three times. Maybe it's right. <laughs> I just um, responded to sort of both pictures. Light, sun, and again, and again, light, sun, repeats again, becomes time. Nice. I have one because I, I also use the word time in my poem too, and it's the second photo. So mid morning we climb inside intricate roots, shadow breaks, sand shifts time. Wow. So I just wanted to like, since she mentioned time, I saw the passage of time in that as well, in the second photo. Definitely. Hmm. Well done. The first poem or the first picture was really hard for some reason, maybe because it's so barren, it's so sparse. I'm not sure. Well, and those colors, that very stark orange terracotta was kind of. Yeah, it really is right. like the, the prominent feeling yeah. is in the landscape. And it's just that one landscape, but it's that color. It yeah. kind of takes over. Mm -hmm. I have uh, I have two, one, one for each. Yeah, mine, uh, <clears throat> this is the first one. Uh, wind and water carve the lines of time on which I stand. Mm. Uh, the other one is a tree um, <clears throat> holding tight to earth. The tree radiates its spirit to the heavens. Thank you. Well, was there anyone else who'd like to share a haiku or shall we get back to the program? A short line. Please, please go ahead. When is a lie, not a lie. I don't know if that's a joke or that would be a line. When it's, when it's said that it's a lie. Okay. Okay. And then I have one more similar to that. Death is the period at the end of life sentence. Mm. That's very thoughtful. Thank you. I have more, but I'm, I'm trying to find them. <laughs> well. that, that are more, more more poetry than just one lines like that. Certainly. Um, anyone else? Susan, shall we, uh, yes. shall we back to business? Yes, so we're gonna go back to our open reading and our next reader is Katie and then Bruce. Okay, hi, um, so I've got two written by the same man. Um, I chose them because one of them, when it came out in 2006, it resonated with me and it still does to this day. It's um, both are very deep, but this first one is very, it's very it's thought provoking, I wanna say. Um, and this man is not like a published poet or anything. He's a lyricist and um, He's not the kind of person you think might write stuff like this if you were to look at a picture of him with his bright green hair. But um, it always stuck with me. So this one's called Arrogance and it's written by Alexander Gaskar. I set foot on the train tracks, the very place I was forbidden to go, and I was terrified. What's a boy to do when his curiosity abounds and the faint and haunting sounds taunt a tireless youth to step up to the confession booth? when not a single thing adds up, and a guilty verdict's met by some wandering fool's bad luck. Open the gates to a stranger, as in the eye of God he was all he could be, himself. Unafraid and blindly defiant, young, abrasive, yet soft, pliant. He had served his years, and his God had not lived those days, those hours, those minutes, those seconds, 
His God had not tasted those drinks and kissed those lips. He had not tried on those clothes or watched the countless numbers of doors close. He had not noticed the pair, of, the pair of eyes shedding the tears with every death witnessed, the pair of feet unfailing and reliable, the pair of hands curious and calloused, or the memories longing to be told as tales again and again for centuries. Arrogant boy, love yourself so no one else has to. And when they lock the gates before you, find a way to climb them. Okay. So there's, there's that one. <laughs> And then um, the second one is called um, It Boiled Down to Wet Paint, written by the same man, Alexander Gascar. It boiled down to wet paint smeared across a bedroom wall just behind the television. Cover it up if it's too dark to enjoy, but try to envision the perfect change. What if it all matched flawlessly? The edges of this room are too dark. Someone invited many shadows into this place, and the floral curtains do nothing for me but the furniture seems right as rain, albeit a little dusty. Change never hurt anybody. Besides, the darker the walls, the brighter the sky outside. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And then how do you spell the poet's last name? I put it in chat as G-A-S-C-A-R, but I bet that's not right. Oh, no, it's um, Gaskarth, G-A-S-K-A-R-T-H, Gaskarth. K -A -R -T -H. T-H. Yes. Okay. okay. Alexander Gaskarth. Well, I've never heard of Alexander Gaskarth, so uh, I'll he's, look he's, him the up. Lead, <laughs> he's the lead singer of a band called All Time Love, and I can post a link of where someone shared some of his uh, poetry and stuff. Sure, please do. I'll, I'll... Yes, and if anybody has any poetic links they would like to post in chat, please feel free okay. to do so. Perfect, I'll go ahead um, and post this. Okay, and so our next reader is going to be Bruce and then Paul and me and Denise, Paul and I and Denise, um, unless uh, there's someone who hasn't signed up to read that would like to read before we do. But uh, Bruce, you're next. And if we could keep saying the context for why we chose the poems, um, you know, a little bit about them just to deepen them. Uh, thank you for doing that thus far. Go ahead, Bruce. Well, I, I rewrote this poem, or I reworked this poem because of uh, President Biden's historic announcement where he, he stepped up and he did what no other president has ever done. And he called uh, what the Turks did to the Armenians a genocide. And uh, for him standing up to that dictator in Turkey, Armenians are celebrating around the world right now, uh, feeling that affirmation. Um, so, uh, you know, there's no denying for a genocide denied will be a genocide repeated. So here I am, I'm gonna tell my grandmother's story in brief and how she managed to survive the genocide and, and make it all the way to, to the United States. Ode to my ancestors on their 106th anniversary, April 24th, 2021. 3,000 years ago, you took a stand, adopting a religion throughout your land. Christianity was new, your race quite old. You knew the dangers, let the story unfold. Surrounded by genocidal certainty, no one heard your cries or answered your pleas. Armenia, the cradle of an ancient bloodline. Mount Ararat, now gone, home since olden time. Only two survivors to breathe life anew Find a young country, red, white, and blue. No English, no money, no time to waste. Find a Catholic priest to marry you, all in haste. Now find a job, survival no guarantee. My immigrant grandparents now living for me. Your families are gone, relatives all dead, new life confusing, trying to get ahead. 
said, children are a blessing, yet more mouths to feed. Faith and hope inspire, follow God's lead. Listen closely, my child, hear of your distant clan. They died for a reason, God's simple plan. Today we remember by honoring them. Be someone worthy and they live once again. Mm. Wow. So that's, that's that. The, uh, the other one I, I'd like to read, I wrote, uh, basically I wrote this for my students and it came out of a phone call uh, when former President Trump was elected. My daughter who was 21 at the time called me in tears and said, oh my God, how could the people elect that man president? What about our environment? I've been recycling, trying to save the earth and what's gonna happen to our environment? Oh my God. And I, and I didn't know what to say to her. I, I felt inept. So after that tearful phone call, I sat down, and I wrote a generation, not just to my children who are millennials, but also to so many of the millennials that I teach every day. And, and so this is to them. It's called a new generation. Political parties sold our used to be free television and radio airwaves as if they were theirs to barter and sell. Selfish and greedy people, our earth wasted on their graves. The wealthy, not so healthy for us who only pray and tell. They polluted our oceans and pristine mountain streams to save a damn dollar and make a lousy buck. Raping mother nature from behind the scenes, betraying our future because they don't give a fuck. The good souls fought the good fight, but lost. Putin and his trolls found gullible voters easy prey. The minority won an election, but at what cost? A lying racist narcissist now has his way. Yet not all is lost when we view the youth of today. They stand together readying our woke nation. It is time for change. Not gonna wait another day. Out, out, greedy isolation. Here comes a new generation. That's it. Thank you, Bruce. Oh, you're most welcome. Thank you. I'm just so happy to be here and to listen to such, such good, just good words. I, you know, I, I tell my students the best words not only pinpoint an idea better than any alternative, but they echo in their own sound and articulation such a positive, perfect storm. It has its own name. It's called phonesthetics. It's the feeling of sound. And when writing poetry or prose, I try to tickle as many senses as possible, as should anyone who wishes to elevate words above the broken winged bird in a cage, they can often turn out to be. And uh, that, that generation, that new generation, I just love them through and through because they're stepping up and they're gonna save this world. I really believe that. Oh. Thanks. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks for those words. Wow. Thanks. Okay, Paul. Okay. Um, I'll be reading uh, Empty Garden, which is a song by uh, Elton John. Uh, in my research, I found uh, it attributed to Elton John and attributed to Bernie Taupin in equal numbers and, and nobody could really tell this was in the early 80s when uh, when they were putting out a new album every other week um however this was his uh, tribute to john lennon 
and I hadn't heard it for many years. And uh, and when I heard it again, it kind of echoed the, just my feelings about the the pandemic and and the, and the world as it is. It's a, it, it's definitely a song of loss, um, and I will try to do it justice. Let's see. <clears throat> What happened here, as the New York sunset disappeared, I found an empty garden among the flagstones there. Who lived here? He must have been a gardener that cared a lot, who weeded out the tears and grew a good crop. And now it all looks strange. It's funny how one insect can damage so much grain. And what's it for, this little empty garden by the brownstone door? And in the cracks along the sidewalk, nothing grows no more. Who lived here? He must have been a gardener that cared a lot, who weeded out the tears and grew a good crop. And we are so amazed. We're crippled and we're dazed. A gardener like that one, no one can replace. And I've been knocking, but no one answers. And I've been knocking most of the day. And I've been calling. Hey, hey, Johnny, can't you come out to play? And through their tears, some say he farmed his best in younger years. But he'd have said that roots go stronger if only he could hear. Who lived there? He must have been a gardener that cared a lot, who weeded out the tears and grew a good crop. And now we pray for rain. And with every drop that falls, we hear your name. And I've been knocking, but no one answers. And I've been knocking most of the day. And I've been calling, hey, hey, Johnny, can't you come out to play? And that's it. That's it. Thank you all very much for listening. It's a, it's a very emotional sort of a poem, I think. Yes. Oh, thank you. That was a good reading, too, of it. Okay, uh, I'm going to read two poems that I wrote. And uh, I grew up in Texas uh, in the 50s and 60s. My father was a hunter and fisherman. And so even to this day, uh, most of my writing is about Texas. Um, it's landscape and my family. And so I'd like to share these two poems with all of you. This one is titled, and they're, they're kind of companion pieces. There's two short poems. Divorce Car. The judge signs the papers. A mother and children pack suitcases. They leave town in a brand new car, not an Oldsmobile 88 like the father owns, a turquoise and white two-door 56 Chevrolet, steering wheel huge as a globe, white sidewall tires rolling through Red River dust toward the four corners. The family never looks back not at the dog whining in the yard, not at the man whose body already is being torn off photographs, not at the small town where people watch their leaving. The divorce car crosses the Brazos River. A hawk dives at a snake near the water and misses. And my second poem is His Gravy. He turned the headless purple bodies almost tenderly in the hot oil. The heavily blackened iron skillet transforming their last frantic flight from him into a family supper of wild dove and white gravy stirred from their dark juices. 
He ate the soul of their winged freedom the same way he dove head first into a deep, dark hole in the river, cracking his skull on rocks, blood running down his face, ready to do it again, hungry for something he could never name. Thank you. I get my Texas accent back when I read Texas poems. So uh, next up is Denise, our extraordinary reference librarian who creates all these wonderful programs. Oh, we all, we all come together and make these happen. So let me ask you guys a question. We have our prizes yet to do. How about if I just do um, one poem and then we'll do the prizes and we might run a couple minutes over. So just to be respectful of your time, is that okay? What do you think, Paul? Okay, everybody. Um, this poem that I'm gonna read is called Break My Heart. It's by Joy Harjo. You might recognize her name. She is the current uh, Poet Laureate of the United States. Um, and she's evidently been, uh, her tenure has been extended. So she's, uh, this is the third year in a row that she's been the Poet Laureate. And I didn't realize that it was a one year appointment. So it's kind of unusual for her to have a, a three year. She's um, uh, a Native American born in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Her father was Creek and her mother was Cherokee and mixed European. Um, and she's, it, it, this was very interesting. I'd read this poem and then read a little bit more about her. And um, I didn't realize she's also a musician. And I think this has a very musical tone to it. And she's also an artist, a painter. So she's one of those folks that is really multimedia, multi-talented. And I thought it just, it kind of hit upon the times. It's called Break My Heart by Joy Har Harjo. There are always flowers, love cries, or blood. Someone is always leaving by exile, death, or heartbreak. The heart is a fist. It pockets prayer or it holds rage. It's a timekeeper, music maker, or backstreet truth teller. Baby, baby, baby. You can't say what's been said before. Though even words are a creature of habit, you cannot force poetry with a rule, ruler or jail it at a desk. Mystery is blind but wills you to untie the cloth in eternity. Police with their guns cannot enter here to move us off of our lands. History will always find you and wrap you in its thousand arms. Someone will lift from the earth without wings. Another will fall from the sky through the knots of a tree. Chaos is primordial. All words have roots here. You'll never sleep again, though you will never stop dreaming. The end can only follow the beginning and it will zigzag through time, governments and lovers. Be who you are, even if it kills you, it will over and over again even as you live. Break my heart, why don't you? Okay, that's it. Thank you. Okay, so retro, spinning wheel, all your names are on here except for Denise, Paul, and me. So I'm now going to spin. We have three prizes, right, Denise? Mm-hmm. Coffee, your choice, coffee or Jamba Juice. And our first winner will be, I'm gonna spin. Catherine, Catherine, Katie. Hi. Congratulations. Wow. Great, Katie. So 
Katie, I have your email address. So this gift card will come. It's a $15 gift certificate. You have your choice of Scout Coffee, that's in slow, and um, Starbucks or Jamba Juice. What do you What do you like? Oh, um, I'm I'm a big Starbucks girl. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, I will get that out to you within the next day or two. Oh well, thank you so much. You just have to write a poem. You have to promise to write a poem while you're drinking your coffee. I have quite a few poems and a lot of ideas. I can do that. <laughs> okay. Next retro winner is, here comes the spin. Oops, I have to do it again because it landed where Katie was, but I took her name off. Kevin. Kevin is our next winner. Uh, Congratulations. I'll go, I'll go for the Jamba, please. <laughs> I've, 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 written, I've written all my poetry before to coffee, so I'll try, I'll try a blended drink now. All right. <laughs> and I'll use, I'll use the email that you used today, right? Okay. Okay. And for our third and final spin, good luck, everybody. Bruce, you won. I did. Oh my God. You won a... on our retro spinner. It landed on you. That's a surprise. I usually don't win anything. So that, thank you so much. <laughs> Your luck has changed. That's the icing on the cake for today. Wow. All right. So, Bruce, what's your uh, pleasure? The Jamba Juice, Starbucks, or Scout? Well, uh, the Jamba Juice I have to go with because the uh, the owner was a former student of mine when he started. <laughs> oh, right. That's awesome. Okay. So I'll go to Jamba Juice. All righty. <laughs> and I have your email. And just a thank you to the friends of the library who sponsored those little prizes. Yes, thank you so much. So did you want to make announcements? Me? Yes. Are you going to make announcements of future programs? Yeah. Or? So again, if you have thoughts on when, whether you want to do another Zoom poetry session or two in the fall, um, like I say, the what I'm hearing from campus is there will be more and more of a student presence and staff presence on campus in the fall, which begins in August. But most likely, any gathering of groups is not encouraged. So that would mean even, you know, 20 people in our um, sort of group area in the San Luis Library is probably not something that is going to be encouraged. So we're, our option probably for the fall is more Zoom. So you can email me or Susan or Paul and see if you want to continue. I'll, we'll look for your feedback. And then I did want to mention um, one other thing, and I'm going to do a slide share, screen share. So hang on, please, while I get that going. <clears throat> I think screen sharing is the most awkward part of Zoom. Okay, uh, just to let you know, we have one other event coming up next week in our virtual library series, and that's um, a book club, uh, virtual book club. So that'll be a week from today. Susan will be leading us. We'll be doing the Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane by Lisa C. in honor of Asian American Pacific American Heritage Month. Uh, we are encouraging you to bring a cup of tea uh, when you come and sit in on this one. Um, and just so you can see some of our past events that we've had this fall, or sorry, this spring, some of our other book club events, and some poetry readings that we had earlier in the year. Um, we do have, and Susan, can you put the uh, URL for this in the chat? Or Sure. I can do it too, either way. Well, if you can do it, probably. Yeah, I've got easier. it right here. So check there. Um, we already have two of our books picked out for the fall. One will be um, everything you wanted to know. Let's see, everything you wanted to know about an Indian, but we're afraid to ask. That'll be part of Native American uh, Literature Month in November. And then in September, we'll have um, Janet Rios will be co-leading with us doing I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter, which is supposed to be really a great read. So uh, stay tuned. We have more things coming up. 
And um, I just like to thank you for coming. It's really great to have a group like this and share. I appreciate your writing efforts, your sharing efforts, and appreciate Susan and Paul leading us through this hour. Anything else you want to add? You can thank you. And, yeah. It thank was you. a pleasure. Thank you all very much. Same for me. Thank you all very much. Poetry is inspirational to me, so it was great to spend an hour listening to it. And I'm, I'm so glad to have met all of the people and the poets here to hear that. And, and geez, Susan and Denise and Paul, wow, you guys, what great hosts. So, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I can't do it without you. All right. <laughs> and thanks to our students that, that came today and shared as well. Yeah. yeah definitely. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.